Hello and welcome back with me, Tibro, the scientist. Today we're actually going to be doing some science relating to heat in RimWorld uh, to help better inform you uh, going forward um, for the new players and obviously for the older players this is going to be a refresher. So welcome in and let's get cracking. For those of you who saw the last video looking at the different building materials, we have the first question of, do different materials change the heat insulative properties? Basically, can any material insulate a room better than another? Now, looking through all of these rooms, you're going to notice they're all at the exact same temperature, having the exact same heat source, one campfire. This indicates that there, there is no difference depending on which material you use. In a sub question asked by Bearded Goose during one of my live streams, um, is whether or not the actual flooring mattered. Now in real life, we obviously notice that carpet is much warmer than hardwood flooring. So looking through, you can see again, the flooring doesn't matter if you control for the type of material used for the walls. Therefore, there's no different type of building or floors that matter for heat. The next question is, how big do I have to make my walls to properly insulate? Now, the general knowledge is that a double wall insulation, as seen in the third room here, um, is the best method, but we're going to go through all of them at using a campfire as our main heating source. So as you can see, uh, a normal room is at about 6 degrees, and a room that has the walls is about 6 degrees. So this indicates that while doubling up on some parts like those corners is important, you can get by without needing them and you'll have the same amount of insulation. Once you move to a double insulation wall, it is actually much better going above 20 more degrees. Depending on where the door is, as you can see, there's just one extra tile. You can actually change the temperature. Not a huge drastic change, but in those minus 80, minus 100 situations with a cold snap or a volcanic winter, this might just keep you from freezing. Now going full out and creating all the corners to the wall actually does not increase your temperature. So this is still the best method. Yet again, changing that one single door spot is changing the temperature. So keeping that door as close to your room as possible is the best choice. Now, for those of you wondering, a triple wall does not do anything. It's no added benefit from this very basic double wall. So your best method of insulation in the north is this style of wall. Now, I realize I'm also saying in the north because I live in the north. In the north or south, in these cold reaches of the world, this is your best style of a wall. Alrighty, so next we're going to look at consistent heating mechanisms that you can use to stay warm. Now, in base game, a completely roofed room without any heating source is actually colder than the outside area, indicating that shade is cooler than sunlight, even though there might not be sunlight around. So, working from this base, what we can tell you, what I can tell you, is that a heater is your best mechanism. It keeps the temperature much warmer. Um, almost 60 degree swing for this standard room size of about 25. Closely related to that is the campfire. It can keep the temperature at almost the exact same temperature. It provides much more light and in warmer temperatures it actually can get you much higher. So it is a slight concern in those when you get to spring or summer, uh, you can get temperatures into 35 to 40 for a similar size room, whereas a heater will actually turn off. So your best bet is to actually use a heater if you can. Now there's also using a torch lamp. This can also produce light just like a fire. It uses much less wood, um, 20 over 10 day, 20 over 9 days versus 20 over 2 days. So you can get almost 5 times the amount of wood out of it, but it produces much less heat, only able to swing about 10 degrees. This is a good choice if you're maybe in the tundra when a whole bunch of wood dropped and you already have a heater and you just need light. So it's an added bonus. Now, I've often used coolers to heat my base in boreal forest or tundra areas. 
Uh, and what I'll say is it's a little bit warmer than a torch lamp. As you can see at about minus 40. So swinging at about 14 degrees when this is on full blast. Um, however, quite often it's not on full blast in those days because you are already in a cold environment. So this is a much lower um, temperature already. So it doesn't have to work. The other thing to concern yourself with a cooler is that when you hit those summer periods and you already have heaters and stuff put on, that 10 degrees can put you back up into that 30 degree just like a normal campfire. Next, looking at lamps, it's actually interesting to see that a, a normal standing lamp does not change the temperature much. Um, it might swing it one degree. I've noticed in the light, sometimes it is a little bit warmer than outside, but it's generally the exact same temperature as the standing lamp. So that might have just been a trick of the, um, the game hasn't updated, but it's just for you to know that standing lamps won't produce very much heat or any at all. Surprisingly, sun lamps do put out about as much heat as uh, a torch lamp. So you don't need to over prep your area, though you have to consider that when this turns off, then it doesn't warm up overnight. So a sun lamp is actually, it is just more of an interesting thing is that it can produce heat. I never thought it could. So it will produce heat in your growing zones, for those of you wondering. The final two methods that can give you consistent heat uh, in colder areas are the generators, the chem fuel powered and the wood fire generator. Now, as you can see, there's no difference in the temperature that they produce. The only difference is there's a different color light. In reality, it's the exact same or slightly, slightly more light with a chem fuel generator, but negligible. The one thing I will point out is if you use a wood fire generator, it uses almost the exact same amount of wood as a campfire, but you can heat with the generator and five heaters. So if you have wood and you already have the ability to create a wood fire generator, the best method is to actually go with that generator over a campfire. So for heating your base, heaters are number one, campfires are number two, but if you can make campfires, it's better to go with a wood fire generator and multiple heaters. The cooler is a good backup and the torch lamp is a nice backup for giving you light as well. And oddly enough, sun lamps give heat. Now, one other thing to note is note with heat is there are different methods of producing heat in the game such as smelting or cooking but neither of those produce consistent heat over long periods of time and therefore i didn't look at those specific methods they're good for adding a little bit of bonus heat when you can but they're not good long term same with the crematorium the next question actually has to deal with roofing and heating. This is a fairly important one for those of you who've played Tundra and you realize you can't get wood. Um, you use it all up basically in the first year and they just don't grow fast enough for you to ever use again. Um, is there a method basically for you to plant trees uh, and, and grow them? So you need an unroofed section for tree planting. Now, I had always lived under the assumption that you can only unroof four. And you, once you unroof four, and you move to five, you wouldn't be able to heat. But as you can see, with four here, five here, but a bigger room, it's sitting nice and toasty at 20 degrees. This is even for the larger rooms that have seven unroofed. The key is, and this came from a user on Reddit, I do not know his name currently. Um, I'll have to check and you can, I'll put it in the post, in a comment in the post down below. But what it is, is if you move over to one quarter unroofed, uh, then it can no longer keep any heat at all. So I've now cleared off one extra tile in each room. I'll show you under the remove roof area. So it's now at one quarter of all the tiles. And as you can see, there's no longer any heat difference with the outside. Despite how many heaters you can have in there, how well they were keeping up before, there is no way to keep up with the outdoor heat. 
Therefore, you can have up to one quarter of the roofing uh, unroofed. Uh, that's an odd way to say it, but you can have one quarter of the area unroofed and keep under one quarter of the area unroofed and keep heat in the area. Um, hopefully that helps in those cold games, cold snaps, long winters, long nights, those very cold places that you need to build some wood. Um, maybe with royalty keeping brazers lit, you need wood. Uh, and this can be a method for you in the future. So remember, under one quarter can be unroofed. Alrighty, so the next question is, how big of an area can a heater heat to a reasonable temperature? Um, we looked a lot at the standard size room, a five by five on the inside down here. So what is a reasonable temperature and what is a reasonable size for a heater to actually do? Now, interestingly enough, the results are kind of intriguing. If you look at small size rooms, um, the temperature varies a lot. As you can see, it jumps from 21 down to 17. You see some negatives uh, there. And that's similar along a lot of the smaller, smaller rooms. Once you get to about um, the 2, 4, 6, 8 size, it becomes a more standard temperature. Yes, it's high teens and it fluctuates, but it is much more there. Now, what's happening is the, the heater is slowly ticking on and off. Um, but, and, and we see that quick drastic drop. Now, as you get bigger, it's just trying to maintain temperature. So it stays at a much more neutral temperature for a lot longer period of time. As you can see, this one sticks in the teens for that almost that entire duration. Now, what we found is the 20 degree mark in, in this style of building, the 20 degree or 20 building, this is the same size as one of these standard rooms, is actually a lot colder than your standard. So building it like this is not, not optimal in any way, shape, or form. However, at an equivalent, that is about as big as you want to get because it starts dropping off a little bit more drastically as you get a little bit larger. And that is where the biggest drop off is. It's, it's a 10 degree swing after 24 to 26. Afterwards, it, it can help maintain much larger rooms, but it's not going to be able to get more, much more temperature than, than these in, um, I believe this is a 40 room. So small rooms, not optimal for heaters. They, they can't figure out and get a nice static temperature. Your 10 to 25 is about your optimal for this heating method.